We have yet another case of a member of Congress appearing to engage in something that we would all be arrested and prosecuted for, insider trading. But when it comes to member of Cong members of Congress, it's apparently totally fine and they can do it with impunity. Now, this time it involves a Republican member of Congress, a gentleman you might have seen in the footage right next to me named Mike Garcia. He represents a district here in Southern California and he sold up to $50,000 worth of Boeing stock. Weeks later, the House Transportation Committee on Transportation and Infrastructure released a report that was pretty damning of Boeing, which could have really hurt their stock value. And I think that this is yet another example of someone having information that the rest of the public is not privy to. Mike Garcia is part of the Committee on Transportation and Infrastructure. So he was well aware of that report. He was well aware of that investigation that was in fact damning of Boeing's 737 MAX airliner. And he decided to sell up to $50,000 worth of stock that he owned in Boeing right before that report was released to the public. And to make matters worse, Garcia completely blew past the mandated window to report the trade, instead disclosing it weeks late. And just three days after he declared victory in 2020. Okay, so he declares victory and then he makes that report and he won over he won by just over 300 votes, so it was a very tight election. Okay, so let's get into more specific details, more context into the situation. So believe it or not, there's actually a funny twist in this deeply aggravating story about corruption and self enrichment. But we'll get to that a little later. For now, let's actually refresh our memory memories on that House report on Boeing. Nearly two years since the first 737 MAX crash in Indonesia, then a second crash in Ethiopia. A scathing Congressional House report blames a horrific culmination of a series of faulty technical assumptions by Boeing's engineers, a lack of transparency on the part of Boeing's management, and grossly insufficient oversight by the FAA. In all, 346 people died. Today's report cites multiple contributors to both crashes. Boeing's rush to compete with arch rival Airbus, Faulty design and performance assumptions about the MCAS software blamed for sending both planes into fatal nosedives and the FAA's failure to regulate Boeing. So that report, that damning report on Boeing's you know, 737 MAX airliner came out in September, as you noticed from that report. Well, Mike Garcia, who was on the very committee investigating Boeing, sold his stocks in August, just weeks before the release of that report. Now, again, he's on the committee who did this investigation. He sold somewhere between 15,000 to 50,000 in the company's stock on August 10th, to be exact. And the reason why there's such a disparity of, you know, that those numbers, right, 15 or 50,000, is because they're not required to disclose the exact amount, but they are required to disclose it. And he did not disclose it in time. He, he blew past the deadline line to do so. And the timing is very fishy to say the least, but there's more. Garcia's transaction reports reveal a cluster pattern, trading multiple stocks either on the same day or within a few days of each other. But the August Boeing sale was isolated with no other transactions for a month on either side. There's more, we're gonna get into the election related you know, election component to the story, which I think is also pretty damning for Garcia. But John, you and I have been covering stories like this for years now. And it is unbelievable to me that it goes undeterred. There's just no shame, right? These reports come out, they do it anyway. They just keep doing this. Yeah. Well, I'm sure it is unbelievable to you in like a cosmic sense. It's utterly believable in the context of the only people who would regulate it are the very ones getting away with it. So we really understand why they don't do anything about it. By the way, I looked, I'm also frustrated just with how stocks work because I looked up Boeing stock price back to the period when that report was coming out and they did this damning report and it didn't immediately impact their yeah. stock. Their stock had previously dipped quite a bit earlier that year. But like something like that can happen and it doesn't really affect like the stock price. But like someone tweets about Eli Lilly and it suddenly tanks it or something. So it's a weird world we live in filled with humans that are inherently flawed. 
Um, and one of the flaws is a predisposition for corruption for those who get into Congress. It, it's it's insane. Not not that that he would do this one sale, but that he would be allowed to own that sort of stock at all because mm-hmm. it is fundamentally tied to the work that he does, or maybe the work that he doesn't do. Because if he owns certain stocks, is he going to work on certain things? Is he going to investigate certain things? None of them should be able to own any stocks in this area, or my preference would be any individual stocks whatsoever. If they want to invest in an index fund or something, then they should be able to do that. You know, That would incentivize them to grow the economy, I suppose. But there's no way they should be able to buy specific stocks that directly relate to anything that they're working on or any private privileged information. I mean, he's on the House Transportation Committee. It's madness. I mean, he's privy to insider information and he's trading on it, literally. And we're all supposed to accept it. And and you're so right. The other part of this is, you know, outside of the closed door briefings, the intel that they're privy to that we're not, there's also the problem of these people being lawmakers who make decisions about laws that impact these very businesses. So if they're invested in these companies, are they likely going to pass legislation that protects us? Or are they going to pass legislation that protects the profitability and you know the, in the financial incentives for the shareholders? Uh-huh. They're shareholders, okay? So Garcia, Mike Garcia is a shareholder for Boeing or was. And you know, I think that especially being invested in like pharmaceutical companies, being invested in private defense contractors, gee, I wonder how these members of Congress are gonna vote on policies that would impact, I don't know, whether the United States engages in some sort of war abroad or whether the United States allows for our Medicare system to negotiate drug prices on behalf of Medicare recipients. Like these are huge issues that impact our lives. And the very public servants that have been elected to represent us are literally working against us because they themselves have a financial vested interest in the profit profitability of these corporations. That's a huge problem, huge, big conflict of interest. Now, there are reporting issues as well, as I mentioned earlier. Members of Congress are in fact required to disclose their trades within 45 days. But Garcia did not reveal his Boeing trade until November 23rd, 2020. Remember, he made the trade in August, August 10th of 2020. So obviously, far more than 45 days had passed. Had Garcia followed the rules, he would have had to report the Boeing sale by the end of September. Instead, Garcia reaped more money from Boeing. On September 29th, Boeing's corporate PAC made its first contribution to Garcia, giving his campaign $1,000 Federal Election Commission filings show. The PAC made a second $2,000 contribution on Election Day, and Garcia, a former Raytheon executive was first elected as the representative of his Southern California district in spring of 2020 through a special election. I'm very familiar with that special election. That was a special election that Cenk Uger ran in. But nonetheless, he then ran for re-election and declared victory on November 20th of 2020. Then reported his Boeing trade just three days after he won the election. And remember, he won that election by just 300 votes. And if you're wondering whether Garcia faced any consequences for his filing, it's important to understand that no one really does. Even if they're found guilty of engaging in bad behavior here, the ethics committee's steepest penalty for a missed deadline is just $200, a $200 late fee. Mm -hmm. So it's like a tip that you give to the committee, like for the profits that you made. Here's a little something for your time. It's shocking that we're expecting the criminals to uh, police themselves in this mm-hmm. case. <laughs> you know, uh, it's shocking that the Republican Party is a populist movement. We hear that hates elites and all of that in the swamp and has no problem with this whatsoever. A few do. You know, I think I think Matt Gates might have spoken out against it once. A couple occasionally do, but there is no mass movement to outlaw, and they're in control of the House. They could do that right now if they wanted to. And remember who was in control of the House for quite some time. That was House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. She outperforms the stock market year after year after year. I mean, she is the genius. savviest genius, savviest mm-hmm. stock trader in the world. I mean, she should be a hedge fund manager. She'd be raking it in 
But why would she do that when she can trade based on insider info? And when she was asked about maybe doing something about this, maybe passing some legislation to rein in this corruption, well, why don't we hear what she had to say about it? Insider just completed a five month investigation, finding that 49 members of Congress and 182 senior congressional staffers have violated the stock act, the insider trading law. I'm wondering if you have any reaction to that. And secondly, should members of Congress and their spouses be banned from trading individual stocks while serving in Congress? No, I don't know to the second one. Um, any, uh, we have a responsibility to report in the stock. On the stock, but I don't. I'm not familiar with that five month review. But if uh, people aren't reporting, they should be. Because this is a free market, and people, we are a free market economy. They should be able to participate in that. Doesn't make my dad would have a very simple one word response to that: fresh. Okay, that's mm. trash. Okay, uh, so this is not a partisan issue. Okay, this is very much a bipartisan corrupt act that both mem- parties or members of both parties engage in. Mm-hmm. Uh, today, we happen to do a more in depth uh, look into Mike Garcia's uh, stock trading. But again, you look at the list of members of Congress who outperform the stock market every year. Pelosi's right there at the top. She's a Democrat. Yeah. Imagine so. how much better she would do if she was this genius as she is and also corrupt. I mean, she would be raking it in at that point. No, it's utterly nonsense. It's a free market, so you can do whatever you want. Okay, uh, then boxers can uh, take a dive for money. Like there's reasons that we have these regulations because corrupt incentives pervert the market that you're referring to as free. We, we simply don't allow that. And then they have an obligation to report. She knows exactly what the Stock Act does and doesn't do. It is an utter joke and she knows it. I personally think, first of all, that they should ban all individual stock trades. But if they're not going to, if all we get is reporting requirements, then the timeline shouldn't be 45 days. It should be negative one day. They should have to report it a full day before they do the trade publicly so that everybody gets the benefit of the insider information that they are clearly using. But of course, nothing like that is even going to pass because the system is set up to benefit them financially in a ton of different ways. This is honestly probably one of the more minor of the ways. Hey, thanks for watching that video. We really appreciate it, guys. And we appreciate it if you become members because that allows us to be independent, honest, progressive, all the things that you don't get from corporate media. And all of that is because of you guys. Hit the join button below and become one of us, become a young Turk.